In this mass, we pray for the Archbishop of Accra. We pray for our own special intentions. We pray for all those who have asked us to pray for them. We pray that God will heal the world of this COVID-19 pandemic. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, shall we call to mind our sins and ask the Almighty God to forgive us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. You have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers entreat. But that no further messages be spoken to them. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to a judge who is God of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks more graciously than the blood of Abel. The word of the Lord. We have received your mercy, O oh Lord, in the midst of your temple. We have received your mercy, O oh Lord, in the midst of your temple. We have received your mercy, O oh Lord, in the midst of your temple. We have received your mercy, O oh Lord, in the midst of your temple. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. In the city of our God, his holy mountain rises in beauty, the joy of all the earth. We have received your mercy, O Lord, in the midst of your temple. 
Mount Zion, in the heart of the north, the city of the mighty king, God, in the midst of its citadels, has shown himself a stronghold. We have received your mercy, O Lord, in the midst of your temple. As we have heard, so we have seen, in the city of our God, in the city of the Lord of hosts, which God establishes forever. We have received your mercy, O Lord, in the midst of your temple. Your merciful love, O God, we ponder in your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. We have received your mercy, O Lord, in the midst of your temple. The Son of God is coming again, and the people sing alleluia. The Son of God is coming again, and the people sing alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Sing, alleluia, sing, sing, alleluia, sing, alleluia, sing, sing, alleluia. And the people sing, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, Jesus called to him the twelve and began to send them out two by two. And he gave them authority over the unclean spirit. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belt, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, when you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. And if any place will not receive you, and they refuse to hear you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet for a testimony against them. So they went out and preached that men should repent, and they cast out many demons, and anointed with oil many that were sick, and healed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. The letter to the Hebrews chapter 12 talks about the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. Whenever we gather to celebrate the mass, we gather to celebrate the new covenant. So, you say, this is the new and everlasting covenant. Now, he tells us that when we gather to celebrate the new covenant, we are not alone. He says, when we gather here, all of us are firstborn sons. We are all people who have right to inheritance. All of us are so important. Everyone is a firstborn son. And he says, when we gather here, we are not alone. The saints are here. When we gather here, we are not alone. The angels are here. So at some point, Father will say, we join the angels and saints to sing. Because we are not alone. When we gather here, God himself is in our midst. When we gather here, Jesus is here and his blood is poured for us. It is sprinkled on us. So that just like the first covenant made some impact on the people, this covenant which is brought back to us every time we celebrate the mass must have an impact on all of us too. If we knew all of these about the mass, we should rush to mass. We should be eager to celebrate this celebration because 
when we gather here, we are in the presence of the divine. It is an awesome experience. Every mass is heaven on earth. Every mass is an encounter with the divine. And this should be an occasion that to push us to the chapel. If only we knew how much or what is happening at each mass. We will rush to this place because we want to have an encounter that we have never had before. With God, the Heavenly Father himself. With Jesus, whose blood pleads more insistently than that of Abel's. With the saints, those who have been justified already. Those who are in heaven. Those whose footsteps we want to imitate so that we shall also get there. With the angels themselves. It is not a joke. If only we had eyes to see. And I pray that God will open our eyes one day to see something small. Amen. When we come to Mass, it is a celebration of the new covenant. I pray that you shall read Hebrews chapter 12. Read it very well. Take your time and read it. And you will see how awesome the experience is at Mass. And then we come to Mass and we are sad as if we have gone for a funeral. Or we come to Mass and we are not participating. Because we don't know what we are about. Or we don't understand what it is about. This is the new covenant that we, Jesus has given to us. Let us celebrate it and celebrate it with joy. Let us celebrate it and be conscious that we are not alone. And that the divine is with us. Amen. Then in the gospel reading of today, Jesus sends the 72 out. It is important that we note that in the Christian life, we must mature. There must be a transition. So that those who are disciples become apostles. Disciples in Greek is matetes. Now matetes is a follower. One who is learning like an apprentice. But there comes a time when the apprentice also becomes a master. The apprentice also goes out to work. The apprentice cannot sit at the feet of the master forever. So... There is a time when he becomes an apostolos, one who is sent out. So we cannot continue to just sit down and learn at the feet of Jesus and not transition into those who go out to also preach to others. The one who is being preached to must become a preacher. Amen. The one who has been prayed for must begin to pray for others. Amen. The one who has been healed, touched and healed, must go out and also touch others and heal them. And trust me, God has already equipped all of us. Amen. He has given us authority to do so. He has given us power to do so. That is why when he sent them out, they touched those who were sick and they were healed. They cast out demons and the demons were gone. They preached to people and they were cut to their hearts. I pray that we shall reactivate that grace that God has given us. We shall not stay forever just apostles, just disciples, but we shall transition into apostles. Those who are ready to move from those who sit at the feet of the master to become those who are into ministry, doing something for the kingdom of God. Ask yourself, as you ask myself, after learning from Jesus every day, Learning from Jesus so many years. What have I been sent out to do? For the growth of the kingdom. Because we must transition. We must mature in spirituality. We must mature in Christianity. And it must lead us to ministry. God has given everybody something to do for the growth of the kingdom. Identify yours and carry it out. So that the kingdom of God will grow. May the Lord open our eyes. To see the beauty of the liturgy. To see the awesomeness of the experience. And the Lord grant us grace. So that we shall transition from only disciples. To also become apostles who work for the growth of the kingdom. May he bless us now and forever. Amen.
My dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John Bonaventure, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Gordon, Elizabeth, Joseph, Felix, Francis, Beatrice, and Albert, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph and Moose Chase Spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, carry the saint of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, in every moment yours, O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, in every moment yours, O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, in every moment yours. All who are prepared to receive Holy Communion should kindly sanitize their hands. Observe social distancing. Hymn 353. 353. I come to you once more, my God. I come to you more my God no longer will I roam for I have sought the wide world through and never found a home the bright and many other spots where I have been Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, rending me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from you. From the malignant enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me, and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hymn 112. The mass is ended, all oh go in peace. The mass is ended, all oh go in peace. We must diminish and Christ increase. We take him with us wherever we go. But through our actions, his life may show. Three. Thanks to the Father who shows the way, His life within us throughout each day. Let our living and loving be to praise and honor the Trinity. We fly to your patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despite not our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world well without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 